Hello, my name is Jason J. Houston, and excuse me, um, my, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and this is for Chaotic Risk TV, and we're talking today with Roy Cathy, the lead singer from um, The Fifth and Steel City. Um, now, we're talking today, Roy, because um, The Fifth you, uh, just recently played the Kiss um, Cruise. What was that like? Well, you know, I mean, it was an incredible experience, to say the least, and and you know, uh, first and foremost, thanks a lot for having me on again. Uh, it's it's uh, it's great to see you. Uh, Doing this now, and it's I'm really glad I embraced this. You know, I'm not real tech savvy. I have a friend that kind of encouraged me. You know, you should you should try to learn how to do those Zoom interviews, and I'm glad he encouraged me and I embraced it because it's been a lot of fun. Well, here, well, here, here you have it, and here we are. But uh, you know, the coolest thing about doing the Kiss Cruise is we were actually voted on uh, the ship by the fans. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it, it's one of those situations where, you know, if you can get the whole KISS Army, uh, uh, yeah. you know, or in this case, the KISS Navy on board uh, to vote you on to the ship, it, it's quite an honor. So uh, we were voted on board with a lot of other uh, super talented bands, sure. uh, bands, bands from all over the world uh, entered this entered this contest and this opportunity. And uh, we, you know, we got to know uh, some some guys from Czechoslovakia, and and there were bands from Serbia there. I mean, it, it was just, it was an amazing experience. I mean, uh, like you said, to just get um, to get nominated or voted or whatever process is by the fans to take part in this is quite an honor. And then to go on the cruise, and not only do you get to perform and all that, and you meet all these great fans and other other musicians, but you kind of must have had the realization, wow, um, you know, our band, the Fifth. Um, it's kind of worldwide. We got fans all around the world. Listen well, you know, we really did get the opportunity to make fans uh, from all around the world. And uh, we, we've made fans uh, in Canada. We made fans from Sweden. And we actually got a, a fan from Sweden to get the band's logo uh, ta tattooed onto them. So uh, yeah, when that's... They're, when they're you tattooing know. your band's name, that's, that's something special. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I mean... Uh, it was just an incredible honor and it was an amazing experience and it was a great way to end the year uh because you know we uh we just got finished uh uh putting out the ep not too long ago and we're still out supporting that but uh it it, it was a great way to finish I up but, a kiss fan, are you personally yourself uh you know i i respect kiss for their yeah. for their uh contributions historically uh to it you know i mean i loved kiss as a kid uh, my guitar player Justin Womble, Kiss is what made him want to be a, a guitarist. Yeah. Uh, it you know he was he is a complete Kiss nerd, Kiss freak. He's got the Paul Stanley rose tattoo. Uh, so for him uh, for him to get to do this uh, Kiss cruise was definitely uh, just uh, an amazing. Uh, yeah. In fact, amazing you're amazing amazing. from Steel City, Mike Flores. I've interviewed him a number of times, and I know he's. He's a huge Kiss fan as well. Um, more specifically, um, Benny Vincent. And, and um, I was telling Mike, um, I had the honor of interviewing Carmine a piece while back, and he was he just happened to uh, bring up Mike, and he's like, I met this guy at this event, and he was wearing a Benny Vincent T-shirt. And, and Mike's <laughs> like, Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that was that was Mikey. That was Mikey. But um, but yeah, man, it was it was a, f a phenomenal experience, and and we had an amazing time, and we made a lot of fans and. Uh, some of these fans are going to be joining us in Nashville. Uh, we've got a couple of fellas that are going to be flying in from Canada uh, to come see us play in Nashville when we do Kill Fest in March. Oh, wow. so. And, you know, um, well, you said that, you know, you, you were a huge Kiss fan growing up and you have um, respect for what they've done historically. Uh, I imagine to take a part in the cruise, maybe you, you got an up close view of just how rabid the Kiss fans are. I mean, and probably got a, um, just a better feeling of how, Anytime a band has even got anything slightly related to Kiss, the fans go wild. I mean, like, for example, the fact that John Karabi used to be in a band with Bruce Kulik, who used to be in Kiss, uh, yeah. Kiss fans will go out and support whatever that guy does, you know, cause, just because he's got that Kiss connection. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, uh, we had a, a very good experience. Uh, the, the company that put it on is a company called Sixth Man out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and, and a lot of the, the fans that were on the Kiss crew said that they would love for us to come back again. So, you know, if if you can get that affiliation with a band as legendary as Kiss, of course, you know, it's a great thing. And 
and, and uh, I'm sure we're going to get quite a bit of mileage out of it. The thing is, uh, Seth was already making some serious noise on your own before that, and this kind of just adds to that, what you were already doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, <sighs> you know, you, you, you always want to believe that your project and your band is like the shit and that you got something really strong going yeah. on and everything, you know. Uh, and we were doing some really good things, but uh, honestly, uh, uh, when that came across my feed one day, you know, I don't enter contests. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, you normally have to jump through some hoops, and then you got to pay yeah. for this, and they want you to fly out and do that, and this and that, you know. And this one was really cut and dry. Just upload your video, and uh, we just got finished releasing the video for "Shake Little Sister," you know, the single for the the EP, oh, yeah. and. Uh, Dude, that video has got everything that a fucking Kiss fan would love. Oh, sure. And, you know, I, I entered the I entered the contest just for shits and giggles. It was just like, oh, well, you know, fuck it. You just upload the video. Why not? Yeah, yeah. And somebody that's been in the music business as long as I have and as jaded as I am, I did not think that it, I stood a chance of yeah. us winning. And uh, and yet here 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 we did. You know, yeah, boy, so. I also seen earlier. I didn't get a chance to read the whole um, post of it. You posted something about um, kind of thanking your friend Mark Ferrari. If it wasn't for him, um, you know, you don't think you'd be where you are today. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I mean, you know, if 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 I hadn't have gotten the chance to uh, audition for Cold Sweat, audition for for Mark, yeah. uh, which the band was called Ferrari at the time. You know, uh, I, I never would have gotten a chance to do the entire cold sweat experience. For you know, people but, that don't know, you're you're actually the guy that replaced um, Oni Logan in that project when he left to go do Lynch Mob, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm the guy that replaced Oni. They they had like a six-month singer search, and uh, yeah. they, they went through all these guys. And, uh, you know, oddly enough, I, I was uh, singing in my old band, uh, Gibraltar. We were playing down in Florida, and that's where uh, Oni was originally from. Yeah, yeah. And Oni's best friend, a cat named Eddie Law, come up to me one night and said, "Hey, my my best friend just quit this band that was signed to MCA Records, and you know they got Wendy Dio as a manager, and Mark Ferrari is a guitar player from Keel, and blah blah blah." He gives me the phone number. I think he's full of shit. Long story short, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but. And were you, were, you kind of, were you kind of starstruck when you met Mike? Uh, I mean, Mark, I mean, were you at all a Keel fan or at least aware of who he was? Well, you know, I mean, one of the first concerts that I went to was Keel, Helix, Crocus, and Accept. Oh, wow. Uh, what a, out, at, out at my, you know, uh, arena here yeah. uh, where I was growing up. And uh, so, you know, I mean, if you would have told me, hey, you know, six years from now, you're going to be in a band with that guy with the blonde streak, I would have, I would have told him yeah. you were, you were crazy. I was familiar with Keel, uh, and and as far as like being starstruck, man, I was a kid from North Carolina playing the bar scene on the yeah, East yeah. Coast. I'd, I'd never been on an airplane before until I flew out to Los Angeles to audition for the band. So when you get that you know, chance, you get that call to go and audition for Cold Sweat. Uh, being so young and naive, you must have been at that age. You must have thought, okay, I'm going to get out to Hollywood. I'm going to live a rock and roll dream. It's going to be just like you see on TV. And then you find out it's quite a different thing, huh? You know, it, it is quite a different thing. You know, at first it was quite the fairy tale, you know, because it was like I, I flew out there, you know, uh, uh, they immediately wanted to go into pre-production for the record. Uh, my parents had to mail all my clothes out there. Oh, yeah. I had I had nowhere to live. Wow. Uh, Wendy was going to Europe for a couple of weeks, so I'm like I'm living at Wendy Dio's house in Encino, California. How, how good were her and Ronnie to you? The reason I asked, I, I heard what kind of people they were. I heard great Craig Goldie tell the story. Abs him. Absolutely, absolutely. Ron, Ronnie was an amazing man and and had a huge influence on me uh, vocally as as well as. Uh, you know, just just your attitude of how you uh, interact and act with your fans. So, yeah, I mean, I, I heard I heard the other guys in Black Sabbath talk about that Ronnie when they, they do a show, he was always the last one back at the tour bus. They're all ready to go, and he had to sit, shake every fan's hand, and, and and he had a thing about where maybe he'd see some fans on the road every single year, and he'd, he'd make a point of remembering their name. They were he would he them. would absolutely remember their name, and and I have a story to vouch for that. Uh, when, when Cold Sweat was out on the road with Dio, it was the Lock Up the Wolves tour. 
and uh, one of our guitar techs was a very original fella named uh, uh, Chris Durant. Okay. Uh, he was um, a, a a black fella that looked like uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. <laughs> but, but but he dressed like a biker, so he had a very original look, and he always wore red Chuck Taylor Converse. Great guy, but you know, black dude running with a bunch of metal guys. Yeah, yeah. He, defi he definitely, yeah, yeah. you know, definitely stood out, you yeah. know, uh, back in, you know, late 80s, early 90s. But he was part of our road crew and we loved him like a brother and I still love him. I, I talk to him from time to time. But uh, Chris went on to be a tour bus driver. Oh, wow. And 20 some years later, He's driving a coach and he ends up in town somewhere on a night off that Black Sabbath right before Ronnie passed away. Heaven and Hell was out and he got to go catch the show. And because he knew all the other coach drivers, he was able to get credentials and he was standing on the side of the stage. And he hasn't seen Ronnie in 20 some fucking years. Wow, wow. And Ronnie's up on stage doing his thing, right? And he kind of looks uh, and and Chris is standing next to uh, an old friend of Ronnie's and a personal assistant named Willie. Okay. And Ronnie looks over and sees Chris and breaks in mid verse while there's a solo, runs over and goes, Chris, Chris. Wow. So great to see you. Well, I can't here, believe well. you. He goes, are you going to stay for after the show? Please yeah. tell me you're going to stay and have a pint. Yeah, Ronnie, I'm going to stay. So yeah. all the stories about Ronnie remembering your name. It, it was, I said it was, that, that was like a great uh, kind of uh, learning learning uh, thing for you. Like, okay, like a legendary guy like that treat, can treat people like that. That's that's the way to do it. Well, you know, you, you definitely want to treat your fans, you know, because you're if it wasn't for your fans you're not gonna you're yeah. gonna be nothing you know and, yeah. and no matter what level you're at you yeah. know from the, from yeah, the bars. Curious, have, you, have, you, have you had a chance to see a Dio movie um dreamers never die not yet man that's definitely on, on hey, my show on showtime if you get a chance i urge you because what's cool about it um it tells like from the beginning to you know the end of his life and what, what's fun is they go all the way back to ronnie and the prophets and you're gonna uh -huh. see Clips of him like with short hair. He looks nothing like the, you know, metal lord that we all know and love. <laughs> and, and it shows oh, yeah. that he was singing those Kroner songs and playing the trumpet. But that that's his story. Uh, it, that's his story, man. You know, yeah. but uh, it, it was an amazing time in my life. And um, you know, Ronnie was Ronnie was a hell of a guy. And then I imagine, you know, from the time you auditioned um, for Ferrari and you were you, you were joining Cold Sweat in that, um, you know, I, you guys even have done a reunion, right? You guys got back with Cold Sweat, like. Oh yeah, we did the 2020 Monsters of Rock cruise. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, uh, that was amazing to get to see the guys after all the, all those years, and and that was pure magic. And uh, were you all surprised, like thinking, uh, you know, are people going to really come out to see Cold Sweat? <laughs> How surprised were you, you know? Well, you know, the, the thing of that I found through the years that is so fascinating about Cold Sweat. One thing about the that genre of music, uh, especially, see, right? you know, they're, they're very loyal. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're very, very loyal. And um, Cold Sweat turned out to be one of those bands at the end of an era. Yeah, yeah. And if you know, you know. I mean, and, and the interesting thing is, is like Cold Sweat can have a huge breakout hit, but yet, yet, you got those loyal fans. And even though you got that tag, you know, ex Cold Sweat singer Roy Cathy, it's yeah. allowed you to go on what you're doing now with the fifth. And it's interesting, you know, you don't just have the fifth, but people were, you have that tag. And I think that's part of the reason you're allowed to do what you're doing now, you know? Well, I mean, you know, it should really be called cult sweat because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we definitely got a cult following uh and we found that out when we did the Monsters of Rock Cruise in 2020 yeah. after 30 years we reunited and it was absolute magic and and I'm telling you man to have people come up to us from Japan wow. Germany 
yeah. Peru, yeah. Bolivia, the UK. I mean, I could go on and on. And they were like, man, that record, I love that record. You know, that record really has a, a special place in my heart. And, uh, you know, it's one of those records that people, you know, almost hold it as like a a, a, a badge of pride, you know. Is it on the record or is it out of print? No, it was uh, re-released. It's been it's been put back out. Uh, you can find it. It's back in uh, back in circulation again. And uh, we got to do the uh, Monsters on the Mountain Festival and and a, a little uh, exclusive for you here. Uh, the uh, Cold Sweat will ride again. We're going to be doing the uh, Rock Timber Festival uh, September twenty three. Uh, so, so there, there is maybe future stuff down the line for Cold Sweat, I guess, because you've seen the fans have a desire for for it still. And uh, on that note, it, there's been any talk of, um, hey, maybe we should do a new album. I, I mean, I know people aren't buying CDs and I like they used to, but like you said, you got that cold falling. People, there's some people that just might. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the thing about Cold Sweat is every time that we get together, we're always like, yeah, you know, we could really, you know, but a few more songs in the set list. You know, <laughs> you know it, it's always something that that we've kicked around and, and we do have a couple of things in the uh, in the archives uh, that we could release to whet the fans appetites if we would decide you to have, like extra tracks that were never released. Uh, we have a couple of demos that were never released, uh, but, you know, we would mostly like to probably focus on new music. Uh, I, I would will say that there is uh, some live recordings from the crews that we would possibly like to release in the future. Uh, but, you know, uh, you never know with Cold Sweat. I'm just yeah. I'm just thank I'm thankful that uh, after that all desire. these years, we're, we're, we're still able to get together and do these shows. And, oh, and sure. uh, so that's and, what's and, um, and you know with the fifth um you know like i, I was curious like um when you go in and record um because you know you got the other band steel city too like do you know right away okay this is a song for the fifth or this is a song for steel city or do you kind of just wait till you're in that mode for that particular <laughs> band? well you know i've been very fortunate to work with some phenomenal musicians throughout my career and some great guitarists so basically the way that the way the Steel City thing works is is you know Steel City is Mike Mike Floros's baby yeah. you know yeah. and uh you know he'll basically send me a uh a a demo of songs uh, uh, uh that are already ba you know already written uh he's already got a pretty strong idea of uh, his melody and his lyrics and stuff like that I will polish it I will yeah. I will make some uh, slight changes here and there uh, me and Mike work together very well, uh, but you know that's 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 Mike's thing. You oh, know, I, I want to keep Mike's vision, uh, uh, you know, kind of intact with. You know what he is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's almost kind of like to me, like um, you know, Dave, uh, David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen thing. You know, um, you know, even if the guys were the best of friends. They they got that chemistry. They got that um, like right. like his songs might not be the same if he had a different singer. You know what I mean? It'd be totally right. different. And and as far as you know the fifth goes that's something that me and my guitarist justin womble uh you know we we co-write the music together justin's phenomenally talented songwriter and guitarist so you know i've been real fortunate you know i've got guys that are like you know you know justin will shoot me a demo and and it's it's already written and arranged and and it's just you know chef's yeah. kiss you know all i've got to do is come up with lyrics and melodies and and uh and and I'm yeah. looking forward to digging in this weekend uh, some more writing. And, and like between the fifth and Steel City, you know, we talked a little bit about too before about um, out of the previous band Cold Sweat that you were involved. With. What's it like to uh, be involved with like I guess the fifth specifically, where it's kind of your band and you, you don't you're not kind of a side man. You're not kind of in somebody else's band. You get to kind of call the shots and it's your it's your project, if you will. Yeah. Well, you know, the fifth has been my baby, you know, uh, for years, you know, I started it when I moved back to North Carolina. Uh, this, this is what I have found is I, I am identified as, as the singer for the fifth, yeah, as yeah. much as I'm known as the singer for cold sweat. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm very fortunate, you know, and you made points earlier, you know, cold sweat made me, 
uh, capable of doing the uh, the uh, the fifth stuff and uh, the fifth traveling and being able to do festival is how I came in touch with Mike Floros because Steel City and the fifth were playing a festival and and he yeah. was familiar with me in Cold Sweat so and it's cool because Cold Sweat well that may be your past but a lot of people know you from originally um, you're you're you're, you're doing something currently it's, it's not just about what was before i mean you're, you're moving forward which i think um you know is important and it's probably you can talk a little bit about this um i'd imagine there are people that you know fans followed you from day one with cold sweat and then there are people maybe just learning of you through the fifth and then they find out oh hey he was in this previous band and he's got this other band he works on called steel city and and, and then some of the fans may not know about the other band or they'll learn about it through one band. And that's got to be a cool feeling, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've reached a, a point in my career that uh, I've, you know, I've, I've got a long enough resume yeah. and I've done enough things that, you know, I can have a certain body of work and catalog of, of material for people to go back on. And, and we just recently got all our stuff organized on Spotify and if you go through all the fifth material from the beginning to to where we're at right now, I am extremely proud of the body of work. And there is there is a lot of great songs that the fifth has written and yeah. has put out that an entire world hasn't even heard yet because we've never been really signed to a major label. But I, another I, interesting part of your story is um, you've been able to have, I guess, this level of success, if you will without having a, a record deal. I mean, there was a, there was once upon a time, a, a time when a band had to have a record deal, but that's not the modern, modern day um, model, you know? No, no. I mean, I've, I've been a, a mom and pop business for the past 20 plus years. I've, I've been a, a, a small business. Yeah, yeah. I've been running this thing. I've, I've taken this band to Japan. Uh, we've, we've, uh, played multiple states, multiple festivals throughout the United States. Uh, you know, I mean, I've gotten distribution deals, you know, major distribution deals worldwide for my music. You know, it's it's a whole different landscape out there now. And yeah. and it, it's not as easy as it used to be, oh, no. uh, but it wasn't easy before. But before the labels gave you this uh, yeah. certain uh, fake uh feeling of security you yeah. know because you were signed you had this money behind you and and they were putting you out there on the road but you you had to recoup if you owed that money and if you didn't pay it back you were you were shit out of luck I you mean, know yeah. You, yeah even look at a band like kiss i mean um if they were if they were a band just coming out of the gates today um i i don't think they would have um, been around 50 years not because they weren't a good band but if you know anything about their story the first three albums weren't selling they're about ready to yeah. be dropped. If, if Kiss Alive One didn't do what it did, yeah, they, they yeah. would have been dropped. You know, yeah. I mean, I I really feel for you know, <laughs> my son sings in a in a in a metal band. You yeah, know, yeah. metal band. You know, he's 19 years old. They're called Crooked Colt, and uh, they're out there doing the damn thing. You know, they're all teenagers. It, it it's like I'm I'm watching my life play back in front. Yeah. Of, now you know, how but, close do you think you were on him wanting to? Yeah. Do but you know it's it's crazy to you know to see these kids what they're doing now and the obstacles that they have to yeah. you know in a lot of ways it's easier for them in a lot of ways it's not you know because we didn't have the huge uh, uh access to so many people that yeah, there's yeah, an instant yeah. audience out there for people now yeah. and, and see I, I think roy part of the reason you're so successful at what you do is that it is a do-yourself kind of business i mean uh, the fifth i'm talking about because you could hire a manager that could maybe do what you do. It's going to charge you a lot of extra money. He's not going to be as dedicated maybe to promoting your, I mean, it's essentially like a guy at a record company got, got 10 other bands on the label. And uh, like you're saying, if your, if your EP is not selling out of the gates, they're going to, they're going to drop you. And then, you know, who's going to do a better job of promoting your band and your music than a guy in the band, you know? Yeah, well, ab absolutely, you know, and, and, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, you know, I've, I've got a great support network through the yeah. years. I've, I've had, you know, managers and management and, and booking agents, and I've mostly used my, my resources and, and, and used their knowledge uh, to kind of help me get from point A to point B. Uh, 
Uh, but, you know, I mean, the majority, if not all of the accomplishments that have happened positively for the fifth over these past 20 plus years has come through me grinding and me just and not, me not stopping. Because I imagine you're the one constant through the last 20 years that's been involved in the fifth, you know? Probably. Well, I mean, look, I mean, who who sings for White Snake? Yeah, yeah covered it up, yeah. Okay, yeah, who sings for the fifth? Roy yeah. Kathy, you know yeah, what I mean? You, so, yeah. you know, I, I started I started the fifth, like Coverdale started White yeah. Snake, and, that, and that's kind of what I, I have always viewed it as. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's just, I didn't realize that the band's name was so closely attached to me. Yeah. Uh, and it is. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of what we've done in, in our little neck of the woods. So. Yeah. I mean, as you should be. And, you know, um, like you're talking about the modern day of the music business. I mean, um, the, the fact that you get fans voting you to for your band to take part in the Kiss Cruise, the fact that, you know, your EP's selling. I mean, I talked to somebody the other day, they are telling me, I, I don't really buy CDs. I don't buy physical product. I'll usually go and pay 99 cents and purchase the latest single a band's put out. Um, mm -hmm. You're lucky if a, a if a person even listens to your song all the way through. So the fact that somebody's taking the time to vote for your band to take part in the Kiss Cruise, and if somebody is playing your music all the going to your YouTube channel playing the songs all the way through, then that's you're halfway there. You know that okay, we got something that people are interested in. Well, the the Kiss Cruise was definitely what I would like to consider career validation. Oh, you know, sure, because sure. I've, I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the fifth. Yeah. I've had multiple members. You know, I, I'm the one that's carried the torch yeah. uh, for the fifth, and I'm the one that's carried the torch for Cold Sweat through these years. Oh, sure, sure. While, the, while the other guys were dormant, Roy was still doing like Crying Shame and, yeah, yeah. you know, Long Way Down and, and you know, I Just Want to Make Love to You. I mean, I was still doing Cold Sweat material. Sure, so, sure. you know, I mean, it, it, it's it's something that uh, it, it's a part of, of who you I know, am. And DNA, my, right? my, yeah. my musical DNA, exactly. And I, I was curious, your, your son being in the music business, have you ever have you ever done any shows with him or have you ever wanted to talk about that? Actually, oddly enough, just just uh, uh, about a month and a half ago, me and my son did a benefit uh, for Toys for Tots oh, cool. uh, oh. here here in uh, here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And uh, me and me and my son got to share the stage, and he is a, a singer, and I'm a singer, and uh, of course, it was a very proud moment. Course, and yeah. uh, and it's, well, it's like it's, you're passing the baton on. So, um, is he a singer? Is he a guitar player? Or? He he is a he is a singer, multi instrumentalist. He's just a really super talented kid. My daughter is as well. She sings, writes music more on the photographer end. I mean, I, I've got two very talented kids, but my son, man, I'm telling you, he's taking this band thing, you know, a little bit too serious for my sake. I guess he's seen what, what dad's done, right? Um, and, and, you know, being a multi-instrumentalist, that's, that's great for him because um, that, that'll make it that much easier to get a gig, you know, if he ever needs an extra gig. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've <laughs> if I would have known he was going to end up being a singer, I wouldn't have wasted all that fucking money on a bass and a guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. and a, some drums. You know, it took him every fucking instrument to finally go, you know, Dad, I think I'm going to kind of do like you and sing. You know, I'm like, oh, thanks, you know, dude. You know, Roy, you look kind of like a young um, Ian Gillen to me. I was curious, uh, Deep Purple or Ian Gillen ever at all an influence on you growing up? I mean, it, you know, I, I was a a sponge growing up because i grew up singing covers so uh you know i i love the uh the deep purple uh perfect strangers album uh, Ian gillen was fantastic on that record he was also had some good stuff on the born again a uh, black sabbath record he was uh uh you know definitely one of one of the greats and so, you, know, you know coverdale you mentioned earlier all, another one of my favorite singers you know and um uh, maybe it's because of my age but i had no idea um you know, um, I, I knew him from White Snake, of course, when the 87 album came out and slide it in. And then come to find out, the singer on that Deep Purple album, Burn, that's actually Coverdale. And, and I was reading, um, he, he joined Deep Purple like on his 21st birthday. That, I mean, what, what, a, what a birthday gift. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Coverdale has, has not, not had a 
he had never been not a rock star. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? I mean yeah. It's like he's he's definitely lived the life. And uh, I just, you know, I mean, one of the the biggest show I ever got to play was with Cold Sweat uh, uh, playing with White Snake at the uh, Mannheim Super Rock Festival in Mannheim, Germany. It was uh, Aerosmith, White Snake, Dio, Poison, Vixen, The Front, and Cold Sweat. Oh wow! So, wow. so uh, and believe it or not, um, I was on the patio playing a show in Fayetteville, North Carolina. At this venue called It's this big multi oh, wow. multi wow. complex called It's, and this was two thousand. Now the Mannheim Super Rock Fest was nineteen ninety. Give you okay, Man Mannheim, Germany. Fast forward two thousand and three. I'm uh -huh. playing a show in Fayetteville. Wow, wow. And, and this guy comes up to me, I shit you not, and he goes, Mannheim, Germany, 1990, Cold Sweat. I was fucking there, dude. You're wow. the guy from Cold Sweat. You're the fucking guy from Cold Sweat. And I fucking lost my fucking mind. True story. Oh, I'm, friend, wow. I'm friends with the guy to this day. How cool is that? So uh, yeah, before you wrap this up, uh, Roy, what's next for the Thip? Are you guys working on new music? Or is that yes. Uh, you know, as you may or may not know, we've recently been signed by uh, Ron Keel's new label. Okay, RFK. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you very much. RFK Media, Ron Keel, the Metal Cowboy, has uh, started a new label, and we are the first band that has been signed to his label. So we are very honored indeed. Uh, we just got finished releasing uh, a compilation CD with Ron where I'm singing a duet with him called American Thunder. Okay. Uh, you, you can go find that on rfkmedia.com. Uh, but um, we are in the midst of writing the first full-length release of uh, the Fifth uh, under okay. RFK Media. So we're writing new music. Uh, we're taking a couple of months off to do that. We're hoping to be recording sometime uh spring summerish and be on the road during that time and you think well. the new full length will come out this year or next year it's coming out this year it's got to oh, come right. out. all right well yeah. you know we're gonna have you back bro and i want to also say um you guys are playing the keel fest is that not correct yes we will be at the keel fest march the 18th at uh bowie's in nashville tennessee that's in conjunction with the rock and pod convention you okay. need to think about getting down there that's a great event so okay. you need to come out to that so the rock and pod convention in nashville tennessee uh that runs uh through march i believe it's the uh, 17th and the 18th but we are definitely playing march the 18th at uh bowie's in uh okay, nashville and, um, Hill Fest. Roy, for, before i say goodbye and wrap this up for today I, um thanks for um thanks for being so patient today but um we want to invite you back and see um how the keel fest event goes and because that'll be fun to hear about so let's plan to do that and um I know it's getting late, so I'll let you go, Roy. Thanks for doing this. Um, have a great no night. Problem. We just did. I'll be posting it probably sometime next week. Once I have a date, I'll let you know. And feel free to post it on all your sites, okay? Please, I sh I will. Everybody's anxious to see it. And uh, once again, man, great to see you. And I uh, appreciate it. And be safe out there. And thanks okay, for keeping. We will keep in touch. And we'll let so much time go between interviews. Take care, my friend. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you, buddy. We'll see you. All right, later.